Hi, Julie Jones from SSB Performance, Smarter, Stronger, Better Mindset Training, here with this week's Mindset Made Simple Tip of the Week, brought to you by Game Day Sportswear. This week, we're talking about injuries, the unexpected, and control. Winter sports are off and running, and two of my teams are fighting injury bung. They are thick in it. Ugh. Seasons bring uncertainty. Life brings uncertainty. And as coaches and leaders and performers, we think that we are in full control of what's coming. We've got plans. We have projections. We've worked so hard and have all the right pieces. And then, boom, one kid goes down. Boom, another kid goes down. Someone leaves your department. Someone goes on maternity leave. And your plan goes out the window. Like Mike Tyson said, everything's, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And as a leader, a performer, a coach, whoever you are, if you haven't been punched in the mouth yet, your time is coming, unfortunately. But what do we do? How do we manage this adversity that is inevitable with sport? It's inevitable with anything we do that has uncertainty, which is everything, if you think about it. We may or may not win. We may or may not make the shot. We may or may not get through the season without injury. The chances of getting through without any injury are very, very slim, yet we still act as if it's not going to happen. And when it does happen, we just talk about it and ruminate on it and, and make it the focus. I remember Dr. Ziegler, our sports psychologist at Cleveland State, said to me at one point, you have all these kids on the team and you're focused on this one thing. And everything else is going fine, but you're focused on this one thing. Now, granted, if you have four of your starters hurt, then that is a lot the main thing. But the games still go on. The game doesn't care. So what do we do? I've got some suggestions. Number one, we have to accept reality. It is what it is for now. And if we manage it as it is now... When we get to the four now or past the four now, we'll be much better prepared. When everybody comes back online, we'll be better for it. But in the meantime, I know it's really hard. What's one thing that, we, that can make a difference in this? It is what it is for now. It's changing how we talk. When things like this come up, our negativity bias comes out front and center. Boom, here I am. This is crap. What are we going to do? If I don't do this, we're going to get fired. You name it, those thoughts are coming. Am I going to get backing even though four of my starters are sitting on the bench? Do they understand all this running through our head? Rule number one is Trevor Moad's number one rule, which is stop saying stupid stuff. He uses a different S word out loud. Why? Maybe you'll remember a gratitude study that I've mentioned before by Emmons and McCullough, they found that people who wrote down things that they're grateful for compared to people who wrote down things that just happened compared to people that wrote down things that irk them or things that were, you know, distressing. The people who were more grateful were healthier. The people who wrote down things that were irritating, so their focus on negativity, had more physical symptoms of illness. So not only does saying stupid stuff out loud affect everyone around you and make everybody else, you're the Debbie Downer, and it is what it is, or you're going to run the sprint anyway, you're going to go to practice anyway, even though you only have eight healthy people, it also makes us sick. It can make us sick. It makes us feel like crap. And we know it intuitively, and yet it's so hard to stop saying stupid stuff out loud. Challenge number one. Challenge number two, can we focus on controllables? What can we control? We spend 60% of our time focusing on things that we can't, so that leaves less than 40% of time focusing on the things that we can control. And even if we just flip that, think about how that would change our mindset, the way that we talk to people, how we feel physically, our behaviors. How would focusing on controllables change us? This is our response. It's our response ability. Not only can we focus on those controllables, we can even break down our uncontrollables into a separate list, which I call the influence list. How can we ask a few questions and make this a little bit easier to manage what we can't control? Here are some really good questions to ask ourselves. On the list of uncontrollables, what can we influence? 
We need to think about how we can shift our perspective toward all the things on that list, all the things on that uncontrollable list. Is the factor something that can be ignored? If so, what strategy are we going to use? We can't just say, oh, I'm not going to think about it. We know that doesn't work. It's like, you know, don't think about the pink elephant. What are you thinking about? The pink elephant. Can you change the way you think, feel, or act toward or about it? Is there something you can do re to reduce the importance you're assigning to it? And then once we identify how we can influence each factor, we move them over to our influence column. And this keeps us in charge of how we're responding. Our responses are so important. We've got a whole list of uncontrollables. In fact, almost everything is outside of our control, even though we think that we control everything as a coach. We know that that's not true intuitively, and yet we still operate under the assumption that we control everything until she goes down and then he goes down and then, and then here we are, stuck. But we don't have to be because we're accepting that it is what it is for now we're going to stop talking about it as if our negative thoughts can change it when they're verbalized. And then we're going to focus on those things that we still have control over. What can we get out of this? What can we do where we are with what we have? That's the question. Finally, Dr. Um, Dr. Pryor, who wrote the book Golf Beneath the, Surp the Surface, ooh, easy for me to say, uses the RAIN method. The RAIN method is this, recognize, accept, interest, and now. So to keep from saying things, stupid stuff out loud, and to focus on the controls, we have to recognize when we're not living in reality or what triggers us to go to that place that isn't helpful, the non-productive thought, action, behavior place. What sets the stage for us in that cage? What pulls us away over to that place where we aren't being our best selves? We have to recognize that. The accept is just this. He says, we have to sit in our current situation without trying to fix it or ignore it. We allow ourselves to be there and accept what is, facts, not feelings, and then we can figure out what our next best move is is. If we don't accept what reality is for now, how can we possibly figure out what our next best move is? The I is Ted Lasso's superpower, curiosity. We are taking a non-judgmental look on how we're, at how we're responding to the situation. What's going through our mind? What's affecting our behaviors? What does this situation require of me? How could I move things from the problem side of the board to the solution side of the board? Now I'm asking myself questions, and we know when we ask ourselves questions, our brain automatically searches for solutions. So we are looking at this with interest, not judgment, but interest. What is it? What am I going to do? How can I move this problem over to solutions, and how can this make us better today? It's like taking lemons to turn it into lemonade. And I understand that lots of times the lemonade is still way too sour and the sugar is nowhere to be found to add it. But if we're just complaining about the lemons and we're not doing anything to get the juice out of them, we're never going to know what our lemonade could taste like. This allows us to think about how we need to cut the lemons up to possibly get something good out of it in the end. And if nothing else, at least we have something to drink. And then finally, the N stands for now. Where are we? What has happened? What's happening now? What might happen in the future? But more, most importantly, what can I influence now? That is the most important thing. I often talk about hitting as identifying, deciding, and acting. And now is the acting. The acting. It's time to focus on what is happening as it's happening. And what we can do now to make the next moment more productive. I didn't say better. I didn't say happy. I didn't even say positive. More productive. What can we get out of this? How can we move forward despite all the circumstances around us? This gives us a chance to make some lemonade. 
In the end, it all comes down to this. We have to accept that our future is going to look different than we expected. And in that different is going to be discomfort. It's going to be situations that we want no part of. But what we can realize if we accept that is that we don't have to protect ourselves from it. We can move forward in them one step at a time. Eliminating some negativity, focusing on our controllables, and then recognizing, accepting, identifying, and then thinking and acting in the now. Not what might happen, not what's already happened, but now. And as Dr. Uh, Amber Selig says, tough things are real. They impact us, they challenge us, they change us, but they shouldn't control us. And they don't have to control us because we can use our power tool of our responsibility. Adversity is going to come if it's not already here. How we respond to it makes a difference on what happens next. What happens next isn't yet decided. It's decided by what you're doing right now. So in the midst of all of the things that are going on around us, if we can figure out what behaviors we need to embody to make that next thing just a little bit more productive, then we're heading in the right direction no matter what baggage we're carrying around. I hope the adversity bug has not hit you, and I hope that it doesn't. I hope you get through the season fully healthy and following your plan all the way through. But if not, you have the tools to help everyone around you manage it more productively. Stop saying stupid stuff out loud. It is what it is for now. Look at your controllable list. Go to ssbperformance.com backslash downloads. Download your sheet today and have your team work through it. What can we control? What can't we control? What can we influence? Put a list of it right in front of you. You can see it front and center. Facts are facts. Feelings are not facts. And then finally, can you use the RAIN method to make things easier for you? If you'd like to set up a thing, uh, a thing, a session for your team as we move into the winter season, reach out, Julie J at SSBPerformance.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great week and happy Thanksgiving.